Well, this is a study looking at the effects of the birth dose of the hepatitis B vaccine containing the preservative thimerosal on the acquisition of infant reflexes, survival reflexes, that are crucial in this monkey model for the survival of these monkeys in the wild. Things like rooting and sucking, the ability to feed, so that if you're an infant who uh, fails to feed during the first three days of life, you're not going to survive in the wild. So these are absolutely vital reflexes. And what did the study show? What we showed is that in the animals exposed to the hepatitis B vaccine at birth within 24 hours of birth compared to animals who did not receive that vaccine, there was a significant delay in the acquisition of those reflexes. What does that tell you? It tells us that something is happening to the brain. There is a damage going on to the functional ability of the brain to develop normally and this is particularly relevant to an area of the brain called the brainstem. And the brainstem is responsible for a lot of the autonomic or automatic functions that we, we have in the body, like heart rate and breathing uh, and digestion. Now, children in America today get hepatitis B shots, but most of them have almost no or no thimerosal in it whatsoever. So what is the applicability of the dose you gave, which was how kids got it until the late 1990s, right, with thimerosal in it? You're giving equivalent doses to primates. How does that apply to today? Should we worry about the kids today getting hepatitis B shots that don't have thimerosal? Well, I should say this. The study did not separate out the individual components of the vaccine, so it cannot distinguish between whether the effects were due to the vaccine as a whole or due to a component of the vaccine like thimerosal. So clearly what needs to be done now is to do that study, which is underway to separate out thimerosal-containing vaccines from non-thimerosal-containing vaccines to see if there is a difference. So we cannot rule out that there is a problem with the current vaccine based upon the absence of thimerosal. The other thing to say, Cheryl, is that, of course, hepatitis B vaccines given to neonates containing quite high doses of thimerosal are being given worldwide, particularly in developing countries. So it is still a major public health issue worldwide. And thimerosal in larger doses is still used in flu shots, which are recommended for babies and, and people here in America, and are being used in um, many swine flu shots for the H1N1 vaccine that's coming out. Well, that's absolutely right. There is still a major public health concern with the administration and the recommend recommendation for administration of thimerosal containing vaccines to pregnant mothers and to infants and children who may be equally susceptible to the adverse effects of thimerosal. And for the record, the government says that there's no reason to be worried about thimerosal or vaccines in general in any way. Um, although there was a recommended, uh, it was recommended that this be removed, the Marisol from vaccines in 1999, and it's been phased out of most vaccines in the United States now, but for the flu shots. Yes, I don't know what they base their evidence on, because the evidence that has been published on this has shown that there is very likely a problem. Uh, there is no safe dose of mercury given to an infant or a, a, an individual at all. You cannot have a safe dose of mercury. It's a highly toxic substance. And the studies that have been done, and certainly more recent studies coming out, show that there is evidence of concern uh, for the infants given the hepatitis B vaccine. And for example, the requirements for special educational needs, a ninefold increased risk in those who've been given the hepatitis B vaccine in three shots, and uh, the risk of autism, indeed, which uh, is, as we know from the literature, um, intimately in associated with damage to the brainstem in many cases. So you can see how these things might tie together. So there is every reason why the American public should be concerned about the continued use of thimerosal in vaccines. And last question. You bring up um, autism and related disorders like ADD. Have there been any studies in humans that this seems like it would be very simple to do? Take human children who have been vaccinated and compare the rates of autism and ADD and such with a pool of children who've received no vaccines. And if the rates are similar, I think the argument, it could appear as though there's not a link between vaccines and this disorders. But if there's a big discrepancy in the numbers, you, you might think that would argue toward a link. Has a study like that been done? No, it hasn't. And what is alarming uh, is that, and two, two, two answers to that. One is that it's extraordinary that a comparison of the total health outcomes, including ADD, autism, uh, has not been performed, looking at children who have not been vaccinated compared with those who've received the full schedule of vaccines to ask what is the difference, particularly in the long-term health outcomes of these children. And more importantly, 
what may be extraordinary to the American public is that the total vaccine schedule, what children actually get in the real world, has never been investigated for safety. So individual vaccines have been looked at, but the whole schedule of vaccines that children get has never been looked at. And this animal model, the one that was reported today, is part of a much larger study which does exactly that. It says what is the what are the consequences of the whole schedule of vaccines that children received in the 1990s in terms of health outcomes in these primates. And that's what you're trying to get at. That's right. And we have a series of, of publications coming out which follow up this, this early publication.